Shall we bow our heads in order of prayer? Our Father, again, we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. And speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and take a little look at this great chapter on the heroes of the faith. <coughs> uh, the writer of the Hebrews here starts with Abel and goes on down through the centuries. And the Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please God. So here they are, uh, starting with Abel and coming on down, Noah and Abraham and different ones, Jacob and God tells us by faith what all they did. And uh, then down here in this uh, 32nd verse, and what shall I say more, or more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I want to primarily look at this 32nd verse. What shall I more say? For time would fail me to tell you of getting a Barak, and I want to stop right there because this is the one I want to talk about, and I've preached about him before. But I'm trusting tonight, I'll do some reviewing, but I'm trusting you get into something a little different then I preached to you the last time I preached on Barak. First of all, I want you to know this list of heroes of the faith, coming down through the centuries, this list of heroes of the faith is still being written. It's being written about this congregation. Somewhere, somewhere in, in God's records, this list has never stopped. And so we're, uh, it is our opportunity as much as for them to get our names on this list of heroes of faith. Now, but in this list of heroes of faith, we find a young man by the name of Barak. And uh, I think I mentioned before, and I say it again tonight, I marvel at how he ever got into this list of heroes of faith. I marvel at it. And right in line with Samson and Jephthah and David, right there almost in the same sentence, putting in David, I can understand some of these men. David, that came, he came out there with his little slingshot and a stone and went against the giant Goliath and said, I come to you in the name of the Lord, not Barak. What a difference there was. Well, so you may say, well, brother, how in the world did Barak get into this list of the heroes? I want to tell you how he got in. Somebody else got him in. Somebody else got him in. If it hadn't been for somebody else, he'd have never got in. Others they did great things on their own, like David going against the Goliath and Abraham talked and walked with God, but not Barak if it hadn't been. And the one that got him in was Deborah, this mother in Israel, or this prophetess. She got him in. If it hadn't been for her, he'd have never been in this list of heroes. She got him in. Now, she told him his calling. She called him one day and she said, Now, Barak, she said, God's called you. He didn't know it. He didn't have any word from heaven. She, she told him, said, God's called you and wants you to get an army of 10,000 men and go against Sisera and to fight him. And she told him the day. She told him what to do. And uh, some people say, Well, I'll tell you, if uh, God doesn't tell me, I won't believe it. Now, I want you to know if Barak would have had that attitude and said, a servant of the Lord can't tell me he's got, that the servant of the Lord, that God's got to tell me, he'd have never been in this list of heroes of faith. There are people who say they won't take anything that a leader or servant of the Lord tells them. They say, God's got to tell me. I want you to know right now, you won't be in the heroes of faith. Amen. This man would never, if he'd have said, God's got to tell me, he'd have never been in this list. He'd have never been here for over, what, thousands of years. This man has been preached about. And if he hadn't have believed the servant of the Lord, he'd never been in here. 
So there are those that say, well, God's got to tell me. Now, I know that people can say, well, there are a lot of false prophets. I know that. Jesus warned against that. And he said there would be. Jesus said there would be a lot of false prophets. But I want you to know that's a trick of the devil to produce false prophets in every age to discount the true ones. This is his reason. That's why people get afraid. Oh, these are false prophets, I'm afraid. I want to tell you, look at Elijah's day. There were 400 false prophets of Baal, and God had one true man. One true man, but wherever there's some false prophets, I want you to know there's got to be a true one someplace. So don't discount the true one because there's a lot of false ones around. Look at then Jehoshaphat when he went up to see Ahab and uh, there were 400, there were another time, another 400 prophets of Baal and they prophesied uh, for Ahab and how all God was going to help him and Jehoshaphat said, isn't there another one around here, a prophet of the Lord? And he said, well, there's one. But he said, he never prophesies anything good about me. You notice what false prophets do? They prophesy things that people want to hear. A true prophet doesn't prophesy what people want to hear. He doesn't prophesy that. He prophesies what God says. So Micaiah was called, and here's one prophet, true prophet, against 400 prophets of Baal. Now who are you going to believe? There's 400 out here saying, look, you go up to battle, you're going to win this battle, and only one, only one. The true prophet was saying you shouldn't go, and there's 400 said you ought to go, you're going to win the battle. Now, who are you going to stand with? I want to tell you the popular thing of the day, brother, was to go with those 400 prophets. But uh, the true prophet uh, prophesied what God wanted. So Jesus said, many false prophets shall come and deceive me. We shouldn't be alarmed at the false prophets that appear today. We shouldn't be alarmed at that. But thank God there are true prophets of God. So that doesn't mean that there's not a true prophet. The devil uses these to, to discount it to the true prophet of God. Well, Deborah told Barak to get 10,000 men and fight Sisera. <laughs> I'm not going to complain against Barak at all. God have mercy. When she told him to get 10,000 men, he's taking her word for it now. And you go fight against Sisera... And, and uh, Sisera had 900 chariots and horsemen and a uh, multitude of people. And all of his men had sh shields and spears. And Israel, didn't, he had 10,000 men and they didn't have a chariot. They didn't have a sword. They didn't have a spear. They didn't have a shield. And here he is. All they had were clubs. 10,000 men with clubs against the whole valley with 900 chariots. And swords and shields and all. No wonder Barak said, I won't go. That's what he said. And he looked at that and said, I won't go. And I don't blame him in the least. I mean, I can't, I can't say anything against him. I'm not saying, brother, I'd have gone. I can't say that at all. But he said to her, he said, I won't go. He said, unless you go with me. Now, if she hadn't gone with him, he'd have never been in here. I want you to see that somebody else got him in because he wasn't going to go. He said, I won't go unless you go with me. Now, can you imagine what that meant for a woman to go out to battle in those days? A woman. He's asking a woman to go along with him out there and went to fight this battle. And all these men had her clubs and everything. And uh, she said, all right, I'll go. She went with him. But if she hadn't gone with him, he'd have never made it. What I want you to see is, dear ones, that here's somebody that got somebody else in the heroes of the faith. And I, <laughs> I tell you, when she read this list, of, she got to heaven and read this list of heroes of the faith. And uh, there she saw Barak's name. I have an idea. She shouted and said, glory, hallelujah, he made it. I had my doubts about him for a while. He said he wouldn't go, but he made it. Uh, she got him in there. And the thing that thrills me is that her name wasn't even mentioned. But his is. What I'm trying to help is to see how wonderful in the kingdom of God to help somebody else get in, whether your name's mentioned or not. She, her name isn't even mentioned. Now, I'm sure she got in there because it does say the prophets, and that would have included her, but her name's not mentioned. But Barracks is mentioned because somebody 
loved him enough and persevered enough and suffered with him enough and prayed with him enough that she got him in. Her own name isn't mentioned, but he got enlisted in the heroes of the faith and is preached about because somebody else got him in there. I think that's wonderful. I tell you, I praise God. Well, because the conditions were terrible in those days. Why, the Bible said that Israel had been under... Uh, the Canaanites for 20 years, so much so that the villages had ceased to exist. That is, the little open villages out in the fields, away from the walled cities, they ceased to exist. People couldn't walk the highways anymore. They lived up in caves and taverns. They stayed away. They walked on byways outside. And God asks, here, this woman asks him to come and get 10,000 men and go against these horses and chariots. And no wonder, he said, I won't go. Unless you go with me. But I thank God she went with him. A woman. How much did that inconvenience her to go with him, to go out to battle? A woman. How much will it inconvenience you to help somebody else get in the heroes of faith? How much are you willing to pay to get somebody else in and your name not mentioned, but they'll be mentioned, but it'll inconvenience you and cost you a lot, but uh, you're willing to do it to get somebody else in. I want to, so many times we think, brother, if I can just do this, this is my job, this is my work, help me to get this. She was helping him get his. You sticking with me? So many times people have a ministry they're going after and it's theirs and they want everybody else to help them. But brother, she was concerned about helping him and getting him in there and she got him in there. And she rejoiced about it. Well, there's other people who got hurt and said, well, I tell you, I did the work and got him in there and now his name's mentioned and mine isn't even mentioned. I'm hurt over that. Come on now, I'm talking about human nature. I'm hurt. I tell you, I feel bad. That's something. Of all the things that mentioned his name and I'm the one that did that. <laughs> and that's just human nature, isn't it? But I have a new idea. This woman rejoiced over the fact that she could get him in the list of the heroes of the faith. This woman was. For all of this, no wonder he said, I won't go unless you go with me. She said, I'll go. So there seemed to be no hesitating about it. I'll go with you. Because she was going to see that this young man made it. Thank God for her. So she went to battle with him. Uh, but because of that, now I'm going to tell you, he, he lost the honor of it. She said, now because you're asking me to go, why, uh, you're not going to get the honor for it. You'll, the battle will be won, you'll win it. And uh, he lost the honor of it, but he still got in the list of heroes of faith. God said, to, uh, I'm going to give the honor to a woman, and he did. Some woman, in the name of Jael, wasn't that her name? She captured Sissa when... Uh, uh, when the battle was hot, why, she's the one who got the battle, won it. But it's no wonder Barak uh, said, I won't go. Down there in the valley with 900, God said to, <laughs> through the prophetess, said, I'm going to draw Sisera and his chariots down there in the valley, and I want you to go fight him. That's no way to fight chariots. If he'd have said, look, I'm going to draw them out of their chariots up on the hillside, they might have hid behind trees and been able to fight them on their own ground, slip out behind a tree and, and hit them with clubs. But down in the open valley? Well, that's where chariots ought to be. And that's where God said, I'm going to send you and you're going to win the battle down there. Well, the Bible helps us see what it is in the next chapter following. This shows that God brought a great rain. And I tell you, down by the river, that river swelled up so high that it bogged the chariots down and the men couldn't operate the chariots and, and they had to run for their lives and God's men came out with their clubs and beat those men and won the day and uh, sent old Sisera off a flying and a woman got him and hit him in her tent and drove a nail through his head and killed him and they won the day. The honor went to a woman, but Barak got in the heroes of the faith because uh, Deborah, the prophet of Israel, got him in there. Oh, what a privilege that God, God could help us to be so lost in him that we try to help others to get in there. I want to help this young man to get in there. I want to help this young woman to get in there. I'm not worried about myself, but I want to get them in there. And God knows who all you can get in there if you'll forget yourself and try to get them in. Oh, I'm so thankful. This is a wonderful little story. How many of us are in here tonight? 
in the heroes of the faith, if we could see what's written, how many of us are here because somebody else got us in? Somebody else stuck with us. Somebody else, when we were disappointed and discouraged and ready to quit, somebody else came along and said, Brother, I'm praying for you. You stick with it. And they helped us to stay in there. Somebody else got us in. I doubt that any one of us here can, can stand up and say, Brother, I'll tell you how I made it. I'm not, I won't be one that'll do it. I can remember years ago, and I think I've told it to you before, when I, when I was in Anderson College, one day, Sister E. Byram, a dear saint of God that knew God in prayer, her husband was such a wonderful man of faith. And this dear woman, a, man, a woman of prayer, stopped me one day and said to me, she said to me, Bob, she said, I, last night God had me awake praying for you last night, I think about two o'clock in the morning. What did that save me from? I don't know. But I just know that some, some mother in Israel uh, got me through something. She got me in through there. She's probably responsible, partly responsible for my standing here tonight. Somebody prayed for me at two o'clock in the morning and got me here. What an opportunity for us if we can do the same thing to forget what all we can do and try and say, God, help me to get this young man and this woman through. Help me to stick with them. They said they won't go, but by, by God's grace, I'll help them and maybe they'll go. Many a young person has turned from the side and been discouraged at the chariots and forces and said, it's impossible, I can't make it, I won't go. Well, then say, Lord, I'll help you. Go with you. We'll make it. By God's grace, we'll make it. And, we'll, and get them into the heroes of the faith, whether your name's ever mentioned or not. What a tremendous privilege we all have, and I'm trusting that God will help us. I know somebody helped us to get in, and I'm praying God will help us to get others in, if we'll do it by God's grace.